In this lecture, we'll be discussing another solved problem on process synchronization. And this question is also from GATE 2010 CS paper. All right, so let's see what is the question and how we can solve it. So here in the question, it says, the following program consists of three concurrent processes and three binary semaphores. The semaphores are initialized as S0 equal to 1, S1 equal to 0, and S2 equal to 0. So here we are given three processes, P0, P1, and P2. And then we are given three binary semaphores, S0, S1, and S2. So we have already studied about binary semaphores. I hope you remember that. And here, since it is a binary semaphore, the semaphores can have only two values, either 0 or 1. So when a semaphore's value is 0, it means that that semaphore is occupied or it is being held. And if the semaphore's value is equal to 1, that means that semaphore is free and it can be used. So keep that in mind. So here we have three processes and this is the code for the three processes. So here in process P0, we have a while condition here, while true. So this will be a loop that will be running forever because it is while true. So inside this loop, we have wait S0. So whenever you see this wait operation, we already have studied about wait and signal. So when you see this wait, just think that it is something like checking the semaphore. So it is checking what is the value of the semaphore S0. Is it free or is it being held? So if it is free, then it can be used or if it is being held, we have to wait. After that, it says here print 0. So in the code of process P0, it is printing 0 and then it releases S1 and S2. So S1 and S2 are also semaphores. And when we say release S1 and S2, it means that it is setting the semaphores as free so that it can be used. And in process P1, we see it is using semaphore S1 and it will first check what is the current condition of S1. Is it free or held? And the code of P1 just says release S0. What is S0? S0 is the semaphore used by P0. And then similarly process P2 uses semaphore S2 and here we have a wait operation which will check. And then what process P2 will do is it will just release S0 which is the semaphore used by process P0. So this is the code that we have for the three processes P0, P1 and P2. Now let's see what is the question. So here is the question. How many times will process P0 print 0? So we see that in the code of P0, there is a statement which says print 0. So we have to see with the processes executing like this and with the semaphore's initial values set as S0 equal to 1, S1 equal to 0 and S2 equal to 0, how many times will this process P0 print the value 0? So we have four options. Option A says at least twice. Option B, exactly twice. Option C, exactly thrice and option D, exactly once. Okay, so now let's try to solve this and find out. So let's see what are the things that we need to keep in mind before we solve this. So as I told you, for a semaphore, if the value is zero, that means it is being held or it cannot be used. And if the value is one means it is free. These are the things you need to remember about semaphores. All right, now let's see the processes that we have P0, P1, and P2. So P0 is having semaphore S0 and P1 is having semaphore S1 and P2 is having semaphore S2. So these are the semaphores that are being used by the three processes. Now let's see. We see that in process P0, there is a while condition which says while true. That means this will always try to keep executing. Okay. So it will first check what is the value of semaphore S0. So what are the initial values? So we are given here that the initial value of S0 is equal to 1. So S0 is 1. And what is the value of S1? S1 is equal to 0. And what is the value of S2? S2's value is also 0. So these are the initial values of the semaphores. All right, so let's see. So when it says wait S0, it is going to check the value of semaphore S0. So what is the value? It is 1. And if it is 1, what does it mean? It is free and you can use it. So it will come into this code and it will print 0. So it will print the 0 one time. So here let's maintain a count of the printing of the 0 values. Print 0 is printed once. All right. And after that, what happens? This P0 is going to release semaphore S1 and release semaphore S2. Okay. And another thing you need to keep in mind is that when the semaphore's value S0 was found to be 1, means it is free and it enters here. And when it is entering here, the value of this S0 is going to be set to 0, which means now it is being used or it is being held. So when we are inside this code and executing this, the value of S0 will now be 0. Okay. 
it says release S1 and S2. So by release S1 and S2, we are saying that release the semaphores S1 and S2. So what is the value of S1? It is 0. So release it means it becomes 1. That means it now becomes free. And S2 also becomes 1 and it becomes free. That means they can now be used. So now if you see processes P1 and P2, if you see process P1 says wait S1. So what is value of S1? It is 1 which means it is free. So this can be executed. And if you look at S2 in process P2, S2's value is also 1 which means it is also free and it can also be executed. So either P1 or P2, any of them can be executed. So let's say that P1 executes first. So if P1 executes first, what will happen? What does P1 do? It just releases the semaphore S0. So where is S0? The value of S0 was set to 0. Now when it releases S0, it will set the value of S0 as 1. And also keep in mind that when we are entering this process P1, then the value of S1 will be set to 0 because we are now making use of this semaphore. So keep in mind that this is now 0. And what does P1 do? It just sets S0 equal to 1. So now the value of S0 is 1. And then P1, since we have entered here, the value is becoming 0. And if you look at here, we see that P1 already completed its execution. There are no more things to be executed here. Now we see that we have processes P2 and P0 whose semaphore values are 1. S0's value is 1, P2's value is also 1. So there are two options we have here again. We can either execute P0 or P2. Okay, so let's start with P2. So P2, if it executes, what will happen? The value of S2 will become 0 because we are entering this S2 semaphore. And then what will P2 do? It will just release S0. That means it will set the value of S0 equal to 1. Now if you look here, S0's value is already 1. So it will not change, it will remain like this. And also note that P2 has now completed its execution. There are no more lines here. So now what is the next? We have to go to P0. P0 is the only one left now. So if you go to P0 here, what will happen? It will check whether S0 is available or not. So what we see here, S0's value is 1 means it is available. Now the value will become 0 and it enters here and it will print 0 again. So we see one more zero is printed. And then what will happen? It will release S1 and S2. Now if it releases S1 and S2, we see the values of S1 and S2 are both 0, 0. They will become 1 and 1. But you see that we already said that P1 and P2 has both finished their execution. Because of that, P1 will not enter this section again. P2 will also not enter this section again because we already said that they have finished their executions. Since they will not enter here, S0 will not be released by P1 nor by P2. So the value of S0 will remain 0. So even if P0 tries to execute this code again, it will check here. So what is the value of S0 now? The value of S0 is 0. So if it is 0, it means it is held and it is not going to come into this code. So it will remain stuck here. Because only P1 and P2 are able to release the semaphore S0 which belongs to P0. But they will not be executed because they have completed their execution. So this will not be able to execute again. It has printed this 0 only 2 times. Okay, so that was the first case. Now let's go to the second case that we were talking about. So coming to the second case, let's see what happens. So in the second case also, initially the values of S0, S1 and S2 are 1, 0, 0. So this is 1. This is 0 and this is also 0. Now P0 executes. P0 checks if S0 is available or not. So S0 is available. So it's going to execute now. So when it is executing, it sets the value of S0 equal to 0. And then it will print the value of 0. It will print 0 here the first time, that is once. Now it will release S1 and S2. So S1 and S2 are released by P1. So it becomes 1. 1. Now if we come and see here, we see that both S1 and S2 are equal to 1. That means either P1 or P2, anyone can execute. So let's say again that P1 is the one that executes. So what will P1 do? When P1 executes, it will set this equal to 0 because it is now entering here and then it will release as 0. So when it releases as 0, it will set this equal to 1. Alright. Now what are we able to execute? If you see the semaphores, we see that P0 is 1 and P2 is also 1. So in the previous case that we have discussed, we considered the case where P2 first executed and then P0. So in this case, we will consider what will happen if P0 is the first one to execute, unlike the other case where P2 executed first. Alright, 
So when P0 tries to execute first, we see that the value of S0 is now set to 1. That means it is free. So it will check here. What is the value of S0? It is equal to 1 which is free. So it will print this 0 once more. And also note that when we are entering P0, the semaphore S0 will be set to 0. So this is the first thing we need to note down. And then it prints this 0 here and it releases S1 and S2. So it releases S1 and S2. S2 is already 1, so no need to change. Now, if you see, we have processes P1 and P2 with semaphore values 1, 1 here. So if you look at P1, we already saw that P1 already completed its execution. So P1 will not execute again. Now P2 had not executed. So P2 will now execute. So what happens when it comes to P2, it will check for semaphore S2, which is 1. So it can enter here. So this will be set to 0. And then what will it say? It says release S0. S0 is now released and set to 1. When it is set to 1, we can again execute process P0 because the value is 1 here. So it will now try to execute her. It says wait S0. That means it will check the value of S0. So the value of S0 is 1. So it is able to execute. It will set it to 0 and it will come inside the code and it will print 0 again. And then it releases S1 and S2. So S1 will be released, which is already 1, no need to change. And S2 will be released, which is also 1. And if you now check, P2 is the only one that is able to execute now because only P2's semaphore is equal to 1 and P1 is already completed. Now if P2 try to execute again, it will not execute. Why? Because P2 also already completed in the previous step. So P2 also will not execute anymore. Now the only one left is P0 and if P0 tries to execute again, when it comes to this wait operation here, it sees that the value is 0 now and it is not able to enter the remaining part of the code. It will be stuck over here and it will not enter here because S0 can be released only by P1 and P2 and they will not release it because P1 and P2 have already completed their execution. So P0 will no longer be able to print this 0 again. So here we see that it is able to print this 0 three times. We see that we can have either two times or three times. So let's see which of the options are correct. At least twice, exactly twice, exactly thrice or exactly once. If you see here, at least twice is the correct answer because minimum it is able to print two times and maximum it can print three times. So at least twice is the correct answer. We cannot say exactly twice. Why? Because it is also able to print three times in the second case. So this is not the right answer and it says exactly thrice. Exactly thrice is also not correct because it is also able to print two times and exactly once is anyway not the answer. So this is how you analyze this and solve this. So you just need to keep in mind the binary semaphores that we have studied and to understand the meaning of 0 and 1 in semaphores and then you will be able to analyze and solve it correctly. So I hope this was clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.